It's great to be here to share my story. Failed three years ago, I came here from Taiwan and being an engine group leader for about three years. So today I'm going to share about a trade secret of venture building. What is the mystery? I want to find the answer in Silicon Valley. So do you know the term of unicorn? Describe a company stock company less than history of 10 years with more than 10 billion US dollar valuations before they end to be acquired or go into public. So last year, actually one year ago, we have more than 1,000 unicorn around the world. So guess how many are in the US? 400? 500? The answer is 525. So more than half of unicorn are located in the US. But look at the table followed by China and India. I found there are some small countries like Israel, South Korea, even Hong Kong show very strong numbers in unicorns. So I'm just very curious if we treat uh, California as a country, of course it's not. <laughs> yeah, how big the number will it be? So I do my own math to calculate the unicorn number per million populations. Competing with the top five country on the table, which are Israel, Luxembourg, USA, and also Ireland. So if you find the number California with 25 of 250 unicorns, and the barrier over 80%, oh, 90% within the California. So actually, you can meet unicorn 20x more than the rest of the US, the kind of, you know, intensity here in, in, in barrier. So why Silicon Valley or California is so magic? So we all know here at Stanford, at Berkeley, at the whole area, this area attracts so many talented engineers and founders, but it also attracts a lot of venture capitalists. So if you took the, not the data from NVCA, the National VC Association yearbook last year, you can find more than 60% the accumulate AUM, asset energy management, is over 60% in total of the number of the US. And even more, the California owns the more, the most bigger fund, the size bigger than 500 million to over 1 billion here in California. So not only founders, we have great, great money here. So how to facilitate so many founders and uh, the ecosystem? We all learned the, 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 the story about HP, IBM, Intel, even Google, Yahoo being founded and invested here. So somebody has a great idea, a great innovation, become a business community, then they attract, attract a lot of money, the money being used to acquire more talent, more technology, and uh, positive feedback. Personally, I call it a venture building model and the, the trust network will be the most important things just like Anya just told you about what is her story. But I'm just curious why and how we can manage this in this ecosystem and can I do this here with my own? So I bring the question here three years ago to start it with my business scholarship at UC Berkeley, being invited as an advisor and a mentor for a accelerator or being a, a, a senior advisor to the dean. I also started my own angel group last year. We started with 15 members, now with 50, and uh, grew very fast. We invest 60 million dollars last year, quite a successful beginning. But back to my 15 years career in my uh, Taiwanese uh, start founders or venture capitalist experiences. I spent eight years in start, eight, 10 years in VC and uh, worked with the government for two years to doing the global innovations program in Taiwan with tier one pharma and also being selected an uh, investor for ecosystem in Taiwan. So I believe I can do something here to reconnect Taiwan and Silicon Valley again, but it's not really the, the story I I believe, because first, three years ago, I came here, and uh, in the second month, it hit, we hit about COVID-19. I didn't want to spend 10 months online with my 12 months here with my whole family. So we choose to stay. 
who want to find more about economic growth or any opportunity to invest. And back to the time that we started the reopening of the economic, I attended many demo days or uh, start pitching or mixed days. I want to find good investment here. And I ask myself, is here the right place, the right thing, or the right time to do? I'm just curious. So I start to look at the historical data. I found in the back uh, two decades. First, the capital market growth is just very alike, very similar to the four year before the Dakar bubble year 2000 with our last four years since the, the second time of the QE. And if I was the investor in late 90s to 2000, which year should I invest? So I also took uh, another historical data. Uh, the red bar here shows the amount of VC fund raised in each year, and the blue bar shows the performance of each year. We call a vintage year, just like the red wine. VC has its own vintage. So you can easily tell the two years of 2003 and 2010 will be the greatest performance year for VEC. And why? It's very to understand because after two years of the economic growth, downturn, or even the capital market crash of each time the bubble burst, you will pick up the most expensive or cheap valuation to be invest of stock or tech companies. And of course, if you put your money like one year earlier than the village year, you should be get rich. If you bought like uh, Tesla or even Google 12 years ago, right? So if it's right now, we facing the burst of a bubble. Okay, so I found the data again. We are facing a burst of the bubble of the second time QE since last year. So we can calculate the VC amount in total for each quarter, and uh, it start to crash during the last four quarters. Regarding the amount and the scale, we can see the numbers fell back to everything before the pandemic, actually one and a half years ago. So if it's the right place, it's the right timing, what kind of investment you should do? Of course, I want to invest a unicorn. So let's take a look about the VC or the world and the power law. Actually, it's a book you should look at. So the power law describes the portfolio distribution of the return. Actually, very low number of your portfolio will give you the highest return, like 50x, 100x. The rest of the portfolio will give you like 10x, 5x, or even negative, or zero, okay, ne uh, zero. So in average, the best performance of a VEC usually gives you like 3x to 5x return in average. So if you miss the biggest one, like the unicorn, how bad will be your performance? In average, your performance will lower from 5x to maybe 1.5x. So this also explains why there is so many facing of mere, uh, sorry, fear of missing out, formal behavior in early stage investment because you don't want to miss the potential unicorn. So where to find a unicorn? I guess I'm not the only one who think about this. So there's another book then Super Founders uh, wrote by a venture capitalist in 2018 who worked for DCVC. He did a very good research through five years and wrote a book about what he find. So let's look at that. First, he defines super founders that I will later describe. And secondly, who will be potential unicorn founders? So first, there are four university are graduates who graduated from the university become super founders or unicorn founders easily. And yes, MIT, Harvard, Berkeley, and of course Stanford. Congratulations if you are a graduate here you will be the most opportunity to become a unicorn founder. And it's easy to understand because your classmates, your teacher, or even the invention here, you're easily to be approached by you that can become your angel, your investor, or even team member later. 
Second, if you work for big company like Google, Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, even Yahoo, you can also become a great potential to become unicorn founder because you have first your great opportunity to approach great opportunity uh, product or even big market sizable more than 10 million US dollar usually to uh, to be launched in the company. Secondly, also you have your potential investor, angel, mentor, or even your teammate later in your staff. Last but not least, it's about your exit experiences or even fail less time in your staff. So comparing to the first timer, the repeat founder will have get higher chance to co-found a unicorn. And if you sold your previous company more than 15 million US dollar valuation, and the book described as a super founder, the more the better, the more time sell your previous company, you will be higher chance to get a reach and become a unicorn founder. So of course, you've got the money to invest yourself again, and also you have the experiences and the network. So the fun fact here is, we all believe that Accelerator is the best place for unicorn, but it's not. 85% unicorn founders did not join any Accelerator because they don't need. They already got money, network, and uh, the experience or knowledge. So maybe Accelerator can generate the next previous um, unicorn before they sell their, 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 their stop release time. So maybe next time you should invest is alumni from Accelerator, not the right cohort, okay? But I still wonder who will be the candidate I can pick up. So I start to check my content list. Uh, I have like about 100 friends here in, in Bay Area. I have 3,000 in Taiwan. So one of the latest is Mr. S, who graduated from the four schools, who worked for a tech company here, who saw his previous staff for twice. And the best thing is he's now doing staff and get a very good, well-known investor from an angel here. So ask him, what do you need? They just uh, post their previous uh, Series A uh, when I visit. So they need a uh, logistic, they need a uh, supply chain, they need a financial guy to help them next round. And also they need more money, of course. But they need a strategic investor. Of course, I'm not a strategic investor because I don't have a job here. I don't uh, do anything for corporate. But I know something that I own. First, I have a friend who is a great CFO candidate at a full-time IPO here in the US. I have a Happened to a friend work for a tech company globally in Taiwan with six years as a hardware director and who just left the company. And I also had a friend who is a cross border logistic provider with six warehouse in the US who might be a very great deal to my, my, my friend S. The last thing is I have a strong connection in Taiwan with some angel groups and also I have my own experiences as a board director. So I told Mr. S, hey, how, how about I introduce my friends to him? And luckily, 100%, four of my connection all works. They become their employee, investor, partner, or service provider. And uh, second, I personally invest, become a shareholder, and uh, I want to commit to become the investor, which they need to attract more strategic investor during the Series B, which happened to last year in July. So we did a very successful fundraising over 60 million US dollar in total and also get several industrial strategic investors in the round. And I also became the one of board regulator last year. And through the experiences we get more deals and the membership grows vastly. So what I learned in my last 18 years, three years here, Fitting years in Taiwan, I found that it takes years to accumulate trust and the partnership potential resource to a good job, a good start, or a good investment opportunity. And the best company you can invest is the company you can help most. And comparing to something you already know about, like product market fit, described in LinkedIn, or founder market fit, I think. Founder invest fit 
Chris described the chemistry or the partnership, long-term relationship will be made really important to a startup company. So last but not least, the trade secret of venture building is making friends from different angle, different back end, a different background and different age as much as possible and try to help each other as much as possible. When you can, you just help. When you not, just introduce and sharing information, opening and see theory. One day you will find there is, is it an opportunity to invest or stop and just right there along your tragedy of life. So the best way to start your own company or join VC is to join a startup and being acquired and grow with the acquirer and someday start again by your own because your own exit experiences and your startup experiences and also the way to join a VC or corporate VC. So there are some uh, question rest here, of course. So if you are an engineer or a founder right now, it's the toughest time during the last decades, but it's also be the best one for the next decade because there are so many in tradition in, in, in non-tech company or traditional industry need engineer because the huge labor shortage was shown on economic data for years that will introduce more innovation and uh, job need in this industry. So there will be a big web of AI and robotics in non-tech or traditional companies later on. So eight years ago, it just happened to me and Mr. S because I wanted to visit the company he worked, Tesla. He treated me twice, hosted me to, uh, into, uh, to see everything in the company, but I didn't buy the, the, the share of the Tesla, I didn't buy a car, but it happened to be I become his investor, board director after eight years. So you, you would not know what, would, none of us know what happened to this through the years. So my conclusion is that the trade secret of venture building is to connecting the dots, everything counts, no matter who you are and where you're from. So this is my sharing. Thanks for your listening and have a good day. Good afternoon. Thank you.